When I think of coming here, I think of reaching out to the members of the church in Hong Kong and having them reach out to us and we bond with this faith that we have in the Savior. It's like you're just been transported into another world and so it'll be interesting to see what is it like here? How does the gospel work in their lives? What's happening in their lives? What difference does it make? What is their story? Do you in your schools have challenges like this where people question your faith? One of my main messages to the young women will be stay firm, stay fixed upon the Savior and His restored gospel. No matter what is swirling around them, and you know the youth have many, many temptations and challenges around them all the time. But if they will look to the Savior, they will be the anchor for this whole Asia area. <laughs> But you're doing all the right things. You are praying, you are doing everything that you need to do to have Heavenly Father help you know what you should do. It, it starts yeah, in the home. And, and so a lot of, of what we need to talk about is how do we strengthen the home? Yeah, we are in this together. <laughs> and Here we are, they're across the ocean and they are doing the very same thing on Sunday that I would be doing back home. We are participating in the Holy Sacrament. I love the sacrament. I love the Sabbath day. I wish that I could just sit down and hear each one of your stories and hear your testimonies. I know that your testimonies would strengthen mine. Walking up to the temple before we even got inside to see it rise above the, the busyness of the street was a touching moment for me. It really was to step into that peace and quiet. At tonight's meeting, when we walked in that room, there was this immediate sisterhood. It taught me that no matter where we are in the world, women love together. You need the Spirit near you. Covenant with Heavenly Father that you will always remember the Savior. It was an amazing meeting. It was between, I think, seven to 800 women gathered in that building. There wasn't an empty seat in the place. We just felt a, a real connection that was, we were here together, we were sisters in the gospel, and we love to learn together. And we bond with this faith that we have in the Savior, that it doesn't really matter where we are, we all love Him and want to strengthen each other. The church in Cambodia, this would be a whole different experience because it's emerging. The church has only been there 21 years. And I have heard and read so much about the faithfulness and the spiritual nature of, of the people in Cambodia. I'm excited because this will be the first time we get to visit members right in their homes. Can I just give you a hug? Oh. I had a tender experience with a little primary president. They were just under a, a shelter, a, a, a tarp almost. Two weeks ago, their home burned down and they lost everything. It was tender. We gathered her little family around and we sang, I am a child of God. And they believe that with all their hearts. They have faith. and and they don't let the hardships of life keep them away from their faith and what they believe. You are such a good boy. Here we are at Trash Mountain, Phnom Penh, Cambodia. The Green Hill four years ago was a huge smoldering dump that thousands of people picked every day and their children just running around in the dump and in the dirt looking for something to sell so they'll have a meal that day. But since then, the church has helped an organization where they're teaching English and good standards. The school actually starts very young, but it takes them right up to the point that they can go to the university. And we are flanked by small homes that the church has built. So there's hope in the air here. Instead of digging through trash all day, these children are learning and they have a home. It's moving to a better place. That, it just feels happy. Mongolia is better next. put on our warm clothes. <laughs> we need a coat. Mongolia to me has always been just a storybook place. A place that is far, far away. And then here we are actually here. <laughs> 
This morning in Mongolia, we were up at the summit, looking over the city. I felt like this place is going to be a real anchor for the gospel. These people are very solid. You can feel it in their testimonies. They're steady. One of the most choice experiences of this visit was an opportunity I had today to visit the care of Nada and her little family. We drove up to the Gare, and uh, you really can't tell much about it. It's just this roundish, whitish, padded thing. And then we stepped in, and the warmth, the physical warmth and the emotional warmth surrounded us. But the real center of the warmth were the, the girls and their mother. Narad, thank you for what you do for these children. And I felt such a kinship. In every place we were in, and as we personally got acquainted with the people, I, I just felt these are my brothers and sisters. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's sweet. It really doesn't matter where you live, it's how you live. And the gospel is our guide in how we live. If you want to see light in people's faces, you see it in the people that, that we've met here.